Hey guys, I wish I did this sooner if I had the time. Unfortunately, I don't. I never had the time. I just decided to do just this one video because we're running out of time. But I wanted to cover the big five, the five factor theory because it's one of the most contemporary and one of the most empirically supported theories today uh, that we can really say that, oh, there's really a scientific empirical basis for this model of personality compared, for example, to like, let's say, Freudian uh, psychoanalytic theory. But anyway, I'm rambling. Okay, let's go on and look at the five factor theory by Costa and McRae. Um, so by the time you're watching this, I expect that you, you've you already finished answering the, the big five uh, personality inventory that I asked you that I linked in our GC. So you probably already have an idea of the content of the big five or the five factor theory. But anyway, let's look at all the different components of the theory and how we can interpret what the results mean and later we're going to do an exercise so that's going to be for your last worksheet okay so yeah, let's do this okay so how did the big five come to be it all started with gordon alport and oddbert's research so they they wanted to to you know like have a set of traits they wanted to see what are all the possible traits or descriptions that you can come up with of people. And where do you turn to for those things? You look at your dictionary. So they they looked at the dictionary. They tried to see what are the different adjects, adjectives there that you can use to describe people. And so they, they counted those things. They tried to organize the words, the concepts there. And they found and came up with 17,953. That's a lot. So as you can imagine, if you take a psychological test that's based on 17,953 traits, that would probably mean you have to take a, an extremely long psychological test. Not very practical, not very, you know, well, useful, but very time consuming and not yeah really not practical so uh there had to be a way to like you know organize all those things so you don't have seventeen thousand concepts to go over and figure out and so another psychologist uh raymond gattel used the statistical method called factor analysis to narrow down the number of traits from that 17,000. So what factor analysis does is it tries to combine uh, concepts or words or you know ideas that are quite similar that have a strong relationship with each other. So that's a that's a very dumbed down explanation of what factor analysis is, but you know, if it works it works. Anyway, so yeah, from 17,000, Cattell was able to narrow it down to 171 traits. Eventually, he, he was able to further narrow it down to 16 traits. Um, and so he was able to create the 16 personality factor uh, test or inventory. And that's also one of the most popular personality tests used in various settings in the industrial and in the educational setting okay so when we get to third year when we talk about psychological assessment and personality assessment we're going to take a look at Cattell's 16 personality factor okay but for now we stick with the big five okay in the late 1940s Fisk another researcher came up with five clusters from the traits previously studied so yeah reducing it to five clusters is even better because it makes you know describing the person so much easier hopefully you know and then years after you have lewis and goldberg uh who labeled it and called it the big five and then mccray and costa 
who decided that they were going to use the acronyms N E O A and C, um, which now for you know to make things easier, we now uh, use and call Ocean. Okay, so the the Ocean uh, is the acronym for the Big Five or the Five Factors in the Five Factor Theory. And they are called the five broad domains. So like there, imagine if you had like five umbrellas and under each umbrella, you had more specific traits. Okay? So the domains are O, openness to experience, C, conscientiousness, E, extroversion, A, agreeableness, and N, neuroticism okay so those are five broad domains and under each domain or under each umbrella you have more specific traits okay um, and those traits came from the like, years and years and years of research of factor analysis and studies um, beginning from the tradition of Alport and Odbert. Okay? So yeah, so let's briefly look at uh, the definitions of the five broad domains first, just so we have an idea before we go deep into each of them. So the first one is openness to experience, and it is the tendency to be open to new aesthetic, cultural, or intellectual experiences. And it's thinking in abstract, complex ways as opposed to thinking in more concrete and, you know, um, sensible, like, realistic, uh, sorry, um, you know, ways, more concrete ways. The next one is conscientiousness, and it is the tendency to be organized, responsible, and hardworking. The third, extroversion, is the tendency to be outgoing, gregarious, sociable, and openly expressive. A, for agreeableness, is the tendency to act in a cooperative, unselfish manner. So that has a lot to do with relating with other people. The same way uh, that extroversion also has something to do with relating to other people. And the last one is neuroticism, which is the tendency to experience chronic... Sorry, why do I have an apostrophe there? Chronic levels of emotional instability and proneness to psychological distress okay so as you can imagine uh, the idea is for us to have like high levels of the first four and low levels of the last one but then again you know it's your own unique mix of personality so each of us has each domain in our personality and we each have different levels of each because of the different traits at play under each domain okay so yeah so let's go and look at and explore each of the different domains and the different traits under them 